Good morning. Um, so I'm Yannick Payard. I'm the uh, Chief Commercial Officer of saint Um Just to make it clear, our business model is fabless. So we sell, but we design and we sell PIC, application-specific PIC that we fabricate at our partner foundry. Uh, my talk will focus on what we call augmented silicon photonic technology, which enabled the laser integrations in a monolithic way with standard silicon photonic available at Foundry for addressing this AI optical interconnect. So we will focus on AI, but as you will see, and I don't know why it's keeping this, I think that it doesn't like the mic, but uh, um, we'll focus on AI, even though uh, our technology works for, I would say, standard data center network. So we heard about, and we talk about this, and I simplify this because what we deliver is really at the bottom of the technology, is really at the file level, is the pipe that goes, that transport the data over optics. But as you know, internet traffic doubles every two years. And so does the, what we call the north-south traffic, driven by end user, and soon to be increased by what we call the general, the generative AI applications. For AI workload, is more on the east-west traffic. And as you know, the computer is the data center. And because AI model size and complexity multiplies by 10 every year, we need more than more. We need more than the usual semiconductor advancement for boosting the computing power. So we need faster and scalable optical networks to support distributed computing and composable architecture, which um, Drute and uh, Light Intelligence has been speaking before. So increasing speed comes with some challenges. Um, this drawing is quite well known, I have added a challenge on it, but basically development cycle of high speed interface, which is really dependent on the semiconductor, which is really dependent on the semiconductor technology advancement, is not fast enough. AI workload diversity, and we spoke about that before, push the composable architecture, push for composable architecture and for low latency. But unfortunately, high modulation order need more digital signal processing, which result in more latency. So, parism is required, but it results in many optical lanes. And at some point, multiplexing is required for reducing the number of fiber, and at some point as well, enabling routing. And I'm sure that, again, um, root technology will agree with this. And then today, if we look at a very high level picture, most of the optics configuration today for AI scale up is parallel, with point to point connections from one switch to another. All data routings goes through electrical packet switching. Whether it is Ethernet or InfiniBand or PCI, everything goes point to point. Even if the resources needed for a given AI workload don't change. So the way of solving this is to add optical switching at some point. Google has been demonstrating this and They've been showing that optical circuit switching enables reconfigurability, lower latency, and lower power, low power per port. Yet, number of ports in optical switching today is limited. So, you need to have wave division multiplexing technology implemented. For the light, for the light wave fabric that they have published many papers on that available on the web, they have developed a specific bidirectional WDM transceiver, which incorporates up to eight lasers inside this module. And for 
in package optical IO, which is still a green field, whether it is in the form of a chiplet or an optical interposer, we see that external DWM light source are required for now. There is no plan to have that integrated, even though it will come at some point. But today, the request from our customer is to have it externally. And the number of, I mean, DWDM light source are required for just reducing the number of fiber and to multiplex all the lane on the single fiber or waveguide. This is just one example of what Google has been designing. This is custom transceiver that they have developed for the Paloma system. Um, it's custom in a way that is bidirectional, but the wavelength spacing is very standard because on the first is a 2 times 400 G with 20 nanometer spacing. And the second one is a eight wavelengths multiplex, but with 10 nanometers spacing, and this is bidirectional. You will note that the laser, the MUX, the DMUX, and the circulator are discrete component. And they have managed to put eight EML on this small environment. I don't know how much it costs, but I know that we can help reducing the cost by integrating all of that. So this is about our technology. So we call it, we call it augmented silicon photonics because we leverage standard silicon photonic available from foundry. We've made that public, we work with Starwer, which is known to be one of the biggest silicon photonic foundry for the market. And silicon photonic today is, I mean, there is no secret, Vlad has been saying that, is now silicon photonic is recognized to be the best technology for high volume, high reliability, and better cost. But it does not integrate the laser. And this is an issue because integrating laser, packaging laser has a cost, and has a cost as well on the reliability. So our process starts from very standard PDK from the foundry, which include everything that you can find in a silicon footing foundry. Silicon, silicon nitride, phono detector, that are all needed for modulator, DMUX, MUX, and so on. So we leverage this, and then after we finish the fabrications with, by adding the laser on the backside of the wafer, after flipping it. So let me go into some step. I need some drink. So without going into much details, this is four steps that describe our process. First one is, in fact, the silicon photonic processing, very standard one. Second is that we flip the wafer and we do what we call a handle exchange, which is basically flipping the wafer, bonding it and another silicon handle in order to be able to remove the backside of the wafer. This is a standard manufacturing operation that is already used by the industry for what we call the backside illuminating sensor. Then the third cartoon is the dye to wafer of unprocessed 35 material that we bond on the, bond on the backside of the wafer, which is a very flat surface, which is coming from the box. Then after there are some other operations to make that 35 material, I would say, that we can process it into a foundry. So 200 millimeters wafer with the 35 material bonded on the backside, we go back in tower and we process the laser. So we fabricate the laser and the SOA as by following a CMOS back end of the line type of process. And then after we bring all the contact on the new top, following again a CMOS compatible process. So we have a complete single chip monolithic device. So if we go back on the, uh, just on the uh, um, benefit of that technology, high level of optic integration, including multi wavelength laser and optical amplifier. High coupling efficiency of the laser because we don't have any, um, we have about 95, 98% coupling efficiency of the laser because it's perfectly on the waveguide. 
Um, simplify packaging because single chip, we don't have to integrate the laser. If you want to add a flip chip amplifier or modulator driver on the top, it supports flip chip implementations because, it's, again, we use standardized CMOS microelectronic type of back end of the line. And the integration of a multi wave lens laser source with the uh, silicon photonic simplify the packaging because we can build, fabricate as many lasers as we want. And we have as well developed some specific technology to ensure that we can develop several lasers on the single piece of tripod material with different wavelengths. And I will cover that later on. So, I said that, fully integrated circuit, we can integrate laser, modulator, SOA, photodiode, everything on the single chip. We've been publishing that in two years from now, but customers have said that maybe focus on the takes because the RX is perfectly under control. So they ask us to say, focus on the takes. And that's how we end up with this product focus. We have two product lines, one which is focusing on pluggable with PIC for takes 800G 1.6, and we have another product line which is focusing on external laser source for optical IO system. So the, the first product line, the one on the, for pluggable, we support both 100G and 200G, and for external laser source, we have again different configurations with eight or 16 wavelengths, 100 gig and 200 gig spacing. Some example, um, I've taken the 1.6, um, 1.60 is in fact a two times 800G FR4. Again, we leverage here our technology with four different lasers spaced by 20 nanometers. We integrate the max, and because for 1.6, we know that silicon reach a kind of a limit in terms of bandwidth, we have developed a specific implementation with an SOA, but we leverage the capability of having an SOA to have the bandwidth. Um, this is in FAB. We're waiting for the sample this quarter, and we'll have evolution board in Q3. For the uh, external laser source, just a quick reminder on where it fits. Um, what we say, dense in package or dense optical IO system. We talk about macro rings for transfer, for transmit and receive that are really designed as close as possible to the main RC. And this today, we're not focusing on this because it's very specific to the GPU, or CPU, or the, the device that is designed by the customer. We focused only on the uh, external laser source. And we have designed this, which is a PEC. And on the PEC, we have um, different configurations, but the device comes as eight DFB laser that generate light that goes on two marks. So we have eight wavelengths per port, and they are DFB laser capable of generating enough power to supply light to a ring network. Uh, and we have developed an electronic controls that make sure or ensure that we are capable of maintaining 100 gigahertz spacing plus minus two gigahertz, or 200 gigahertz spacing plus minus four gigahertz and we can maintain that as well over temperature. So that's why as well we deliver this product in a form factor that will be a, a, an ELSFP type of module, which is close to an OSFP. This is um, um, developed by OIF in the form of ELSFP, and this is really to make it easier for a customer to um, use that kind of laser source. So again, this is in FAB. Expecting sample in this Q2, a version board in Q3, and this kind of module will be available by end of this year in Q4. So in terms of call to actions, what we are really looking at is explore WDM pluggable optics requirement for achieving the highest power efficiency for AI and machine learning use case. We've seen Google making public the lightweight fabric um, this may inspire some other customer. If there are customers that are looking for specific transceiver, as long as they are 
as long as there is a volume that is big enough to justify a custom device, why not? We focus today on application-specific standard device, but we are open as well to look at specific requirements that will leverage our technology. And the last point is, we understand that um, having an external laser source is not always um, easy for the system set up, so we have developed some way of ensuring, for example, that the transmit or the receive can identify on which wavelength they can tune or they should tune. We can add information into our optical carrier to tell the transmit or receive where to tune. And this is more of a custom design or custom implementations. Or cost and this is what we would like to discuss with customers because we believe that there is a great value in having this feature. Thank you. So if you have questions. It's time for one very quick question. You're the next speaker. So. Okay. What is the yield of uh, these integrated uh, uh, lasers on the back end? What is the advantage? Uh, the same tower which is they are providing the pedestals for the laser integration. So what is um, your advantage in this case? The advantage is really is to leverage the standard silicon footing PDK and the fact as well that we come on the back side so we have a very flat surface to bond our tree fiber material. And what is the yield? So to have the yield we'll need to have some volume. Um, what we have been doing is that when we are we have been working in making in place an industrial supply chain, volume supply chain, so we've been working with Tower, but as well with other partners. And what we have seen is that when the uh, bonding process is in place, which took us some year to make sure that we have this, the yield is, is not an issue in that case. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not saying it was easy. Huh? <laughs> okay, thank you very much.